first being announced in January of last year, today's video, it is long overdue as we take a look at HalloweenCostumes.com's exclusive Ghostbusters Proton Pack Prop Replica. Hey everybody, Jason here from GhostbustersNews.com and for the third time this year, I'm gonna get to review a brand new life-size Ghostbusters Proton Pack. And this one, as I mentioned in the intro, it is made by HalloweenCostumes.com, otherwise known as Fun.com. And if you subscribe here to the channel, you've no doubt heard about this pack quite a bit over the last year and a half. As we were following along with the production, as well as its various delays. Was it worth the wait? Well, we're going to find out today, but I should let you know that this Proton Pack, it was sent to the Ghostbusters News Headquarters for review uh, by HalloweenCostumes.com. That said, they're not paying us for this video. They didn't tell me what to say, what not to say. This entire thing, it's all my opinion. And in this video, I hope to provide an overview, pretty much a review of this Proton Pack as well. We're gonna compare it next to some similar offerings. I also should add that for anyone who'd like to grab one of these Proton Packs, they are in stock and readily available as of this recording. You can find a direct purchase link down below in the description. So considering I have waited a year and a half to finally get this Proton Pack in hand, I'm a little excited today to not only do a deep dive on it, but also compare it next to the Hasbro HasLab Proton Pack and also the recently released Spirit Halloween Life Size Pack. Two similar sized offerings and two Proton Packs that we received earlier this year. And whenever we post about this pack on social media, a lot of people out there, a lot of you, you like it. But there's also some, and uh, justifiably so, some that have a problem with it, uh, mainly because of its price point being at $499. Now I hear some of you shouting, Jason, $499, isn't that more than what the, uh, the Hasbro Proton Pack sold for? Uh, isn't that more, pretty much double, than what the Spirit Halloween Proton Pack sells for? Yep. Yeah, yeah it is. Now to hopefully maybe try and give you a bit of context as to why this is, I mean, this Proton Pack, again, it was announced initially January of last year, and it was supposed to release the following summer. But then it got delayed once, twice, four, five, five times, five times, I, I think it was, uh, due to what was said to be safety protocols. And had this pack released last summer, it would have shipped before the Hasbro HasLab crowdfunding Proton Packs, which by the way, uh, sold about 20,000? As well, it would have shipped long before the Spirit Halloween life-size Proton Packs, which they were just announced like a couple months ago. And uh, not only were they announced, but on the same day, they were available to order and they like shipped out that same day. Like fans were receiving theirs the, the next day. Right after being announced, fans already had their hands on them. Seriously, as a fandom, over the last couple years, we went from pretty much being starved when it comes to off-the-rack Proton Packs to really the market being, I think, oversaturated to a degree. Now, later on in this video, we are going to be doing some direct comparisons between Proton Packs, but I should let you know that the majority of comparisons, they're going to come between the Halloween Costumes Pack and the Spirit Halloween Proton Pack. And that's mainly because I don't feel as if it's fair to compare it next to Hasbro's, as the sale model for that one, it was entirely different. I mean, I already mentioned it, the HasLab, that was a crowdfunding campaign, meaning they knew exactly how many units were being sold in advance. They were all practically guaranteed sales, there was little to no overhead, and given that the Hasbro HasLab pack, it's no longer available to buy, well, I mean it is, but it's practically just from third-party sellers. That means the vast majority of Ghostbuster fans out there, and they're not going to be willing to pay those exorbitant, you know, huge price tags. So again, our comparison today is going to go towards the readily available Proton Packs, Halloween Costumes, and Spirit Halloween. But uh, with that said, we are going to do a comparison between the Halloween Costumes and, and Hasbro later on, so keep watching. Also, I'm realizing that I've said Proton Pack like uh, probably 80 times in the past like three minutes. Um, if you guys want a fun drinking game, take a shot every time I, I say I say Proton Pack. Pro probably don't. You may you may die. And being that right now we're showing you this B-roll, let's go ahead and fixate on this brand new unlicensed nuclear accelerator. But first, this is how it arrived inside a big box. 
And given that it's not meant for retail, up top here we have a rather simple sticker label identifying it as a Proton Pack costume replica. Opening up, I gotta say, it's actually packed pretty well. There's a layer of padding on top, which is accompanied by some instructions. And after removing that, you're gonna see everything is nicely wrapped, and the Neutrona one has even been separated, meaning you don't have to worry about it coming loose and shipping and getting damaged. Now, if some of the features of the pack, they look a little off-scaled, or just the entire pack, it looks slightly big to you, there's a good reason for that, as it does scale ever so slightly larger. In fact, it's got an extra two inches in height over Spirit Halloween's offering. Its description online says that the pack is made of molded plastic, and I was quite surprised to find when I received it in hand, while it's not soft by any means, there is a very slight give to it. You can kind of see that here as I press down. I'd kind of compare it to like a really thick plastic vinyl. And the material they did use here, it does seem to give some of the more detailed areas a slightly softer look. But given it's not a more rigid plastic than say what can be found on Spirit Halloween's life-size pack, I feel that this one, it's much more acceptable to damage. In fact, I feel like you could huck this thing down a flight of stairs and it'd be fine. What? Why are you cutting back to me? I'm not actually gonna throw it down a staircase. That'd be ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now detail wise, you'll see there's some dry brushing throughout the pack made to mimic wear and tear. We've got the various caution and warning labels which have kind of a gloss coating to them, as well as the split loom like tubing and the red and blue wires. And kind of fixating on those wires here for a second, they're quite soft. You'll see here there's a lot of give to them as well as they stretch quite a bit. Looking at some more of the expected detailed areas of the pack, obviously copyrights, they were not attained for any of the clippers. With this one here just appearing silver with absolutely no label whatsoever. There's also a ribbon cable, which while we could harp on because it's not screen accurate, we really can't. After all, none of the life-size proton packs, at least the toy, you know, life-size proton packs, I'm not talking about the prop builders out there, but the toy proton packs, none of them to this point have actually had a screen accurate ribbon cable. Which is weird, that seems like an easy thing to replicate. Why, why, why can't no companies get, get that right? Now we are going to dive into the shell, or should I say shells that are being used here in a few moments, but there are a few areas here that they have certainly cut some corners on, they have simplified. This includes some portions of the pack that have been molded together, which shouldn't be molded together, such as the booster tube and the booster frame. And since we are talking about this area, the pack, you know, where the booster tube is, moving to the left, we have got the iron arm and the rod here. Now this actually I consider a positive here, as I think the iron arm, it looks quite good, as well as the rod sticking out, it's actually quite soft as you're seeing me bend it here. Moving along, we have got the power cell, which you have undoubtedly already noticed, and yes, that, that is a sticker. That's right, a sticker. It, it's, it's a sticker that's on the power cell. Not lights, but a sticker. Obviously, this is one of the biggest and more than justifiable criticisms when it comes to this pack, especially given that, again, this is $499. But being that we are talking about the price tag and the lights, let's go ahead, move down to the lower end of this Proton Pack, where you're going to find the Cyclotron. And before we flip the switch and see those lights, again, very much like Spirit Halloween's offering, the bumper is part of the pack's main shell. And for me, if I could change only one thing about this pack, it would be this. Well, the bumper and, of course, uh, uh, the power cell. On the bumper, there is this blue label. Uh, moving to the left here, we've got this plastic shock mount. And below that, we've got an infilter. Its positioning is slightly off. However, we do have that danger label as well as additional stickers. Now, finally, focusing in on the cyclotron here, you can see we got the four red lenses in place. And this is where the only lights in this proton pack, they are found. And of course, I want to see this thing light up, and to do that, first we need to take a hold of the Neutrona wand. So let me go ahead and just uh, grab it here. You'll see that it is attached to the pack using a V-hook-like bracket, and honestly, this works really well, holding it securely in place. The tubing for this wand is another area where this is similar to Spirit Halloween's Proton Pack, as in it's a bit rigid, and it doesn't really flex or rest like actual split loom. As I just mentioned, the Proton Pack Cyclotron, that's the only area that has lights, so there are no lights whatsoever 
in the wand. That means there's nothing in the main body here. The tip of the wand, it doesn't light up when you blast the proton stream. And with that, the majority of details here, they're supplied by stickers. And speaking of stickers and labels, when this Proton Pack was first revealed again in January of last year, uh, one of the first things that uh, people kind of like noticed and mocked and ridiculed just a little bit was, was this little sticker label right here. It's supposed to say slow blow, but instead it says slow bowl, slow bow. But again, given that this prop replica, it was delayed like five times over the past year and a half. Um, I really, really wish that this was going to be something that they would have, uh, you know, fixed. I mean, it is an easy fix just to print off your own label or buy a replacement from Etsy, but um, I don't, don't really think we should have to do that. Should also say that all these silver pieces here on this wand, they are just plastic painted silver, which for me was a bit surprising because at first glance, some of these silver details, some of the accents here, they actually look quite good. Continuing with the wand's main body, you will see that there are four switches and each one of these, they can be flipped. However, out of the four, only one switch actually does anything and it's this one right here. And flipping the switch will turn the proton pack, the Selectatron lights on. And I know a lot of you, you've been waiting for me to kind of touch on this, but yes, the lights, they are going counterclockwise. And while this is slightly less conventional than your typical proton pack, which uh, goes in a clockwise fashion, it actually is still screen accurate to the first film, as in the rooftop scene near the end, both Ernie Hudson and Bill Murray's proton packs can be seen going counterclockwise. Skipping back to the Neutrino one, they've installed a push button. And this push button is what initiates the proton stream. Well, I should say proton stream sound effect. And does anyone find it kind of strange that there's a push button for the proton stream when there is, uh, again, three switches that aren't even being used? I mean, surely one of those could have been the proton stream, right? I mean, one even says activate. Initiating the stream is simple enough. Just touch that button and you're going to hear it. And it sounds good enough. I mean, I wish it was louder as the only speaker here is found in the wand. Now the stream itself will turn itself off at about 20 seconds, or you can just turn it off manually by pressing that button again. It's now time to talk about the construction of the pack itself. I mean, I kind of mentioned earlier about it being made out of shells, not just one big shell. Because as it turns out, it is divided up into smaller modular pieces. And because of this, it is really easy to take apart for those who may want to mod and trick this thing out. But before I start, you know, removing pieces of the Proton Pack, uh, we're, we're going to have to jump to another area of it first, and that is the motherboard. And looking at what it's made out of, it looks to just be a really thick cut of painted MDF which I'm going to be totally honest here, I really, really like the look of. It kind of gives me vibes of like Ghostbusters stunt packs used in the original film, or even the packs used as part of the Universal Studios Ghostbusters stage show from back in the early 1990s. But yeah, throughout this motherboard, you're going to see a bunch of screws holding everything in place. You screw them off and then you can easily remove and alter parts of your pack. Like right here, I've removed a couple of screws holding the iron arm and power cell in place. You can see I'm just kind of moving it to the left here. And for those curious, and given that this is the only portion of the Proton Pack that has electronics, this is what the inside of the Cyclotron looks like. And given the wiring system in here is pretty simple, if you did want to like alter this around and make your Proton Pack like the lights in it go clockwise and not counterclockwise, you could totally do so. Now putting the Proton Pack together here and going back to the motherboard, let's talk about this makeshift Alice frame. That while not an exact replica to an Alice frame, uh, it is appreciated. I mean, this is the only Proton Pack to release that actually has a frame attached to it. And at first glance, when I saw photos of it on the website, I thought it was going to be made out of plastic, but no, it turns out it's actually metal. As well, another surprise here, while it's not too thick, HalloweenCostumes.com, they also included some padding up near the top of the frame. There's also adjustable shoulder straps as well as a heavy duty padded waist strap, uh, both of which from a quality standpoint, they feel good. I mean, they're similar to what you'd find like at a military store, at least when compared to those that use plastic buckles and clips and not metal buckles and clips. And the straps, they do feel comfortable when on. In fact, here's what the Proton Pack looks like on my back. Again, given that it does come with a pre-attached frame, I do love how high this thing rests on my back. It will certainly grab attention at a convention or a Halloween party. 
And I mean, as it should, after all, it's a, an unlicensed nuclear accelerator. Now, as promised here, let's do some quick comparison shots. Uh, we're gonna keep Halloween costumes pack on the left. And first up, here's Spirit Halloween's recently released life-size Ghostbusters Proton Pack on the right. Up next, even though I said we really wouldn't compare the two, I know if I didn't, I'd be lynched in the comment section. So here is Halloween Costumes Pack next to Hasbro's. So to bring this video, this review, full circle here, again, earlier this year, 20,000 Proton Packs, they were shipped by Hasbro to backers of their HasLab crowdfunding campaign. Also, Spirit Halloween, they totally surprised fans, revealing and releasing on the same day their life-size Ghostbusters Proton Pack. And then there's this one, an exclusive to HalloweenCostumes.com and Fun.com. It was supposed to release last summer, got delayed five times an entire year, but it is finally here. But within that year that it was delayed, the entire landscape when it comes to Proton Pack prop replicas, it has changed entirely. Despite me thinking that there could be some type of oversaturation going on right now, will this actually still find a market? Well, yeah, totally. And that is because Spirit Halloween, they do not ship outside of North America, meaning there is a ton of fans over in places like the UK that, uh, I mean, they're, they're hungering, they're fevering for a proton pack. And guess what? Halloweencostumes.com, fun.com, they ship these proton packs over there. So if you are in the UK or, I, I don't know, Paris, or pretty much anywhere within the world, including North America, and you would like to grab HalloweenCostumes.com's exclusive Ghostbusters Proton Pack, you know we have a direct purchase link and it is down below in this video's description. I gotta send a huge thank you out to HalloweenCostumes.com for sending this Proton Pack to the Ghostbusters News Headquarters, making this video possible. As always, be sure to subscribe. If you'd like to join up with Ghostbusters News, check out our Patreon page. A link to that is down below in this video's description, and we'll see you right back here next time. Chills up your spine, your senses don't deceive you. Call up the guys who are ready to believe you. The number's 555-2368. But before you call, let's get something straight. What do you do when the ghosts have been busted? Is it the source universally trusted? If you got a case of Ghostbusters blues, the cure for sure is Ghostbusters blues. Jason's the guy who's doing the heavy lifting. Through rumors and gossip, he does all of the sifting. Reporting and sorting, only the truth he is dishing. Cause he himself is a full torso vaporous apparition. What do you do when the